This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 365, as many days as in a year, recorded on August 9th, 2018. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their news reviews, product updates, and conversation all for the average tech guy. Tonight, maybe a little more conversation than most. Of course, we we uh, we host we we broadcast this live on YouTube. I don't know why I just deviated from the the the, uh, the script. Standard I mean, intro, yeah. You got what, away from what, it. A little what bit. I do. I'm your host Jim Collison, broadcasting live <laughs> from the Average Guy TV studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. A little warm today. Of course, we brought we why do I keep, why do I keep wanting to say broadcast? We post the show. <laughs> With world class show notes. What is wrong with me out at the average guy.tv? I have no idea what's going on. Of course, you can join us on our mobile app and uh, sponsored by LastPass. We appreciate their sponsorship. Head out to homegadgetgeeks.com. You can get that both on Android and iPhone available for you. Easiest way to listen on the road, on a, in a train, in a plane, in a car, while you're working out, walking the dog, all those kinds of things available for you. Easy way to do it. You catch the live show on it when you're traveling as well. Homegadgetgeeks.com. Don't forget, subscribe, rate, and review an Apple podcast if you want to do that. Find us on YouTube somehow, or at least on the, the Google apps somehow. It's a mess over there, but many of you do it. I think you use Overcast. And, of course, if you're on YouTube, follow us. Great ways to do that over there, especially the live channel. That way you know you get notified when we go live. And uh, same thing on Spreaker. If you follow us over there on Spreaker, you'll notify when we go live. All right, Mike took a week off. Mike Weaker, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be back. Had a little work event last Thursday, so uh, missed out, but glad to be back. I heard Edward was fantastic. Edward did a nice job. I think I just had an aneurysm. I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't know what's going on in that intro. <laughs> like, holy cow. What? Uh, you want to broadcast everything. Just everything's broadcasting. Uh, I need, uh, I need, I'm in desperate need of a vacation and I've got one coming up, which I'm really excited about. Good win. Today, win. today I was at work trying to do a uh, staycation. So Sammy goes back oh, to nice. school. So I'm going to take her to school. Last year I was at uh, podcast movement during that. I felt like the worst dad of the year award for not moving his freshman daughter into college. That was, Ooh, yeah, that was, bad. that was a bad move on my part. I uh, shouldn't have done that. You can't take those things back. So this year took the week off, get her to school, be there when she moves in, all that other good stuff. And, um, and so, but I am looking forward to some downtime. It has been a busy, busy, busy summer. Uh, a lot of things going on in Gallup, a lot of things going on here at the average guy TV and a lot of, a lot of good podcasts. If you, Missed some of the things we've done during the summer. It's all recorded for you and available for you. Just go back in. Uh, I get it. Tonight, with Mike being back, we're kind of back to our news, reviews, product updates, and conversation. Um, first of all, I want to start off the conversation. Uh, just It's the beginning of the month, and I didn't get a chance with um, with Edward last week to really thank our Patreon subscribers. And, Mike, I'm, I'm always amazed. You know, we don't push Patreon very hard. You know, we, we talk about it. It's available. And yet, you know, there are a bunch of people out there who help support us um, every single week. And if you're one of those uh, Patreon subscribers, I want to say thanks uh, to you uh, for doing that. It's just really, really important in, in what you do. It allows me to do system upgrades and have that fun that those those funds go to an account. And if things get kind of squirrely here, I need something to keep uh, the podcast going, it, it all helps. So we appreciate uh, those Patreon subscribers uh, getting that done. You know who you are, and it's going to read them off, but uh, I'm not going to do that tonight. I just, you guys know who you are. Thanks for doing that and appreciate it in all the all the, the ways you support us. It's amazing, Mike. Um, you know, when you have 70, do I have, do I have 73? I think I have 73 people. Wow. And yeah, but at a buck or two bucks. You know? Yeah. So that's great. Uh, pretty cool. We appreciate it. Um, one quick announcement, one quick conversation announcement before we get started. Um, you know, most of you know that I'm heavy into burst mining, and we won't talk about that during the regular show. A lot of that in the post show during crypto, but I'm going to start winding down those operations. And so I have 14, 13 now. I just sold one of them, but I've got 13 eight terabyte drives. They're the Seagate M SMR drives. Great for backup. Um, they're always the least expensive ones to buy. I think we bought them at 150. We'll be clearancing those out of here at 100 bucks. So if you're interested and in, you need to back up drive or you want to pick up one or two or three, uh, 100 bucks plus shipping, and we'll just do actual shipping. We'll figure out how all that works like when you contact me. So just send me an email, 
Jim at the average guy TV. If you're interested, no pressure. And I'm not in a big hurry, Mike, to be honest with you. Like, I don't want to, I'm not jumping ship on, on burst just yet. Um, I just, it's one of those things that markets down, you know, it's like these dry, these drives are only going to hold value for so long. And I'd kind of like to get them out. hundred bucks is a pretty good price to, to, and those are just for listeners. I'm not advertising this anywhere else, but here verbally on the podcast, just for, for, just for the podcast listeners. But um, yeah, I think it's just time. I may, you know, if things change or we get some other projects, I may, I've been looking a lot at building a, you know, a more robust server, to be honest with you. You know, I got this spaghetti octopus set up, USB everywhere kind of thing. I was kind of like, man, I wish I had a better setup than that, you know, and 10, 10 terabyte drives uh, are starting to really, they are coming down a little bit in price. Um, I saw some for, I saw some internal 10 terabytes refurbs, um, like 219. And I was like, okay, well, let's, let's start thinking about maybe some tents. Anyways. So if you're interested, you're listening to this, you're interested, send me an email, Jim at the average guy.tv. We'll figure out the details um, going forward. Mike, speaking of drives, uh, from two weeks ago, it seems like we've been talking a lot about SSDs as of late. And Ernesto uh, in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash the average guy, if you want to join us over there. By the way, let me say this as well. I've re-energized the mailing list. So I kept I kept wondering, like, what do I do with this thing? You know, we've got I've got 500 people that have signed up to be on the mailing list. I'm not really good at sending out updates via email. And then I began some, you know, we began some really good deals in the Facebook group, but not everybody wants to join Facebook. So I thought, well, I'll tell you what, every time a really good deal pops in Facebook, I'll grab it, copy it to the site, put it in the newsletter thing, and I'll shoot a note out that says, hey, we've got a good deal for it if you want to come over and grab it. So we're going to turn the newsletter, the the, the subscriber newsletter, into kind of deals. Probably send one or two a week. I don't think it'll be that many. Probably be some announcements, some updates, some things that I just want to say, like if we're going to skip a show or if I need some help with something. So if you haven't subscribed yet, head over to theaverageguy.tv slash newsletter, and there's a subscription button right on the top. Just put your email in, subscribe in. You'll do- have to double opt in at this point to get in there. And um, I'll send you whenever we have deals coming in the Facebook. So you don't have to join the Facebook group, but many of you had. We appreciate you. Ernesto had jumped in and dropped a SSD drive. Crucial has been running out on the Amazon, uh, in the Amazon space, has been running their MX500, which is a 500 gig, you know, um, SSD. And right now, $89. That's a good deal. That is. And I like the, the Crucial brand. I've had really good luck with. I've used a lot of the Crucial products, whether it be RAM or storage. I really like yeah. the products. Yeah. No. So, um, you know, that is a deal. I uh, That's that's one. We'll actually put that one in the show notes to this show. So if you go HGG, averageguy.tv, HGG365, if you want to get out there. I still may run that out through the newsletter as well. That was a pretty good. It was actually when he posted in the Facebook group, 99 bucks. And so when I went out there tonight to double check to see if the link was still working, it was actually 89 bucks. So that's coming out tonight. Let me actually grab that. um, And let me, we'll copy that and put it into the chat room as well. Just so you guys can, if you're listening live, you can head out there and take a peek at that. And then of course, Schoonover, who is the master of all deals uh, this week found uh, a data SSD 960 gig with all the rebates and all that other stuff you can do to get that done 127 bucks so Almost you know a terabyte ssd i know i know That's great. we're we're starting to see those one terabyte ssds you know his price point mike is per you know he does this cents per terabyte or cents no cents per gig right and right now this this a data at 127 bucks is 13 cents a gig and the at all the price points we've seen to this point, it's been about 15 cents a gig. So right. pretty good. Like we're starting to see, I don't think it'll be too long before those are 10 cents. And then, you know, when we're seeing those one terabytes come in at 99 bucks. I was going to say that sub 100 terabyte SSD is when I'm. I think no. it's kind of game over for most spinners at that point. Like why for the average guy, why do you need, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Why do you need more than a terabyte? For the average guy, like not for maybe not for our audience, but for my mom or for 
like I just don't I, I don't see most people even going beyond the one terabyte limit, right? Don't you think? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. So 960 on this one. Um, again, I'll throw the link. This one will be in the show notes as well. We'll uh, let me copy and paste this one in for the chat room. You guys can go out and take a look at it. I would, ooh, that's a long link. Sorry, guys. Um, ah, that's the Facebook one for it. I guess maybe that should work. Let's see if it actually gets you there. Yeah, it's over at Slick Deals. That'll get you to the link as well. We'll have that in the show notes available for you. 960, um, not quite a terabyte, but pretty close. Got a coupon code in there to get that down. Shipping is free, so 120 eight bucks to get it done. Mike, uh, you had gotten singled out in the Facebook group because you were talking about team viewer. Yeah. And, and I had so, asked about splash top versus team viewer. Yeah. And, and who was that? That, posted? you know, I thought I had copied that in there. Shoot. Uh, tell you what, read that for me. You got, do you have, you have access to that? Yep. Or do you? So they, uh, they said that so splash top is cheaper. So if you were going to go out and purchase, so the question came about because team viewer is starting to, if you're using it on a commercial network, even if it's for personal use, they're starting to crack down that. So I had asked, okay, what about Splashtop? And they said Splashtop is cheaper, but it's also slower. So there's a pretty good amount of lag with Splashtop. So uh, they end up going with team viewer instead. So okay. I I'm still in the boat of, I haven't been flagged yet. So team viewer is still working for me, but I also have a VPN into my home and I can just use RDP whenever I need to. So that would honestly probably be my backup solution is VPN and RDP. Okay. Yeah. I think we, and I think that was the conclusion we came to. That was Ernesto as well. Who That's right. Threw, that was Ernesto. That question. Okay. Yeah. Out to you. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know. You know, I use team viewer for one thing now and that's the remote into my mom's computer. And, uh, and I don't know, it, you know, I, it made me sign up for another trial I don't know if it's going to do if I can just keep getting 10 day trials every time I kind of need it. That's one of those perfect scenarios for team viewer where, you know, you really don't want to pay for it. Cause I use it once a year. Right. You know? So, um, splash top was one, my, uh, that, um, Dave McCabe had, had been, I think that was Dave back in those days, Dave had tried and used, I hadn't heard of it in a long time. In fact, for whatever reason, we used to talk about, um, those remote access software all the time. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't use team viewer in maybe a year or two, it seemed like, and it just doesn't seem, I don't know. It just didn't seem like a thing anymore. Like I just wasn't doing it that much. Yeah. yeah. See, I use mine all the time, yeah. mainly cause I've got so many computers plugged in there. So every, all the computers in my rack and I need them for different things. And so I, I use it quite a bit. And then I've obviously got my families in there my mother-in-law, you know, all the people I help in there. So it's, it's pretty useful. I'm probably in there on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, Tony mentions Chrome remote desktop, which is, which would, is kind of, they, they kind of came up with that and it works pretty well. Um, you know, so it just didn't seem like it was a thing anymore for the most part. Right. Maybe it was a thing for me. I, yeah, maybe I got really busy at work and maybe I just stopped checking my things at home That's during true. the day. You know, right. yeah, that, that's quite possible as too. What do you, what are you using? I think about you who is sitting in your car or you got your earbuds in listening to the podcast right now. What are you using? And I, I you know, is it, is it a thing for you? Are you paying for it? Let us know. Jim at the average guy TV. Appreciate your feedback on that as well. We had uh, two episodes ago. I think you and I were here. We were talking, Kyle had dropped in on the conversation and had been talking about programming, right? How do we teach these students to do some programming. In response to that, Kevin Schoonover out in through the Facebook group dropped in code.org has this really cool and, and uh, it's currently, I threw the link in the chat room. It's their playground Exp express educators pack. And again, that link will be in the show notes if you want to go out there. It's out of stock at the moment, but man, if you are interested in some of these new, there's a whole new wave of hardware that has to be software driven that teaches kids how to code, right? Um, this is a, this is the kit for you. It's got like 15 circuit playground express boards. It's got 15 USB cables. It's got a bunch of small alligator clips. It's the A data fruit LED sequence. So you, you can you can make the lights do various things. It comes with all kinds of sensors, light sensors, sound sensors, mini speakers, push buttons, slide switches, mic. 
I'm this is <laughs> like I almost bought this thing just because it sounds like really cool. Like you can, right, I can see you using this with your interns, you know, college yeah. age kids. You know, just having fun, like creating yeah, silly, goofy things. Yeah, like robots with this kind of thing. Three fifty. Um, so not your maybe not your average guy price for something like this, but uh, a really cool, uh, a real cool opportunity to get in on and create in a classroom environment. Let some kids experiment with some things that they can program and build and put together and do some cool stuff. So um, Kyle, if you're listening, head out to the show notes, uh, take a look at that. That may be something out of stock now. Makes sense. It's kind of out of stock. School starts here in Nebraska in about a week. Most schools I think are starting up and, uh, and pretty, pretty cool little, uh, little gadgetry. Mike, is that, does that appeal to you? Like, would you be a guy who would sit down with your kids and build these things a hundred percent i'm already excited for them to i hope these things are still around when my oldest emmett is old enough to start doing this i've seen some of these packs from you know a, a lot of different companies make things like this and i've been excited i want them to get started and i'll be learning too because you know i'm not a developer i know basic html and that's about it so it'll be fun it'll be a little project we can do together and i think it'll be a, it's a good way to do it because it gives them something physical along with the code side i'm really excited for that yeah no lots of lots of fun stuff i bought a micro bit I haven't still, it's at work. Or maybe it's, no, it's here. It's actually sitting up there. I need to mess with it. It was 12 bucks or 15 bucks. BBC uses it, same kind of deal. It's a little circuit board that gets you, gets kids programming. You can attach things to it. It gets them writing code. It takes JavaScript or Python. So some some really cool, I, I bought it at the beginning of the summer thinking I'd have time this summer. I And that's just stupid. I like it. Yeah. You have time during the summer? That was the Probably dumbest the busiest time. That was the dumbest thought I ever had, just, just to be honest with you. Mike, one of the other thoughts I had, and I posted this to the Facebook group, one of the things I've been thinking about doing is ditching my traditional wallet. And I it's not in my pants pocket right now, but w- one of the things I hate about my wallet, and I don't know why, but it gets dusty back there. Like I don't I don't know if I have a dusty Your butt. Wallet gets, it, yeah, does. I was say, okay. it gets dusty. I've never like, heard of that problem. It, it gets like um, uh, the fabric from my jeans and stuff gets in there and gets kind of balled up. And okay. like it's, yeah. And like my credit cards wear like, you know, cause it's the, the dirt gets in there and they, and maybe I shouldn't wear, I shouldn't take my wallet in my pants when I'm outside working on the weekends or something like that. Yeah. Maybe I don't know what you're doing. Maybe I don't know. Weird activities. Maybe it's dusty yeah. though. Cards okay. get beat up a little bit. It's one of those fold. So I was kind of thinking maybe I'll just ditch. I've been looking at these. Um, these wallets, let me, I'll take a snapshot of this and put it in the chat room. So those, so folks know what we're talking about. Cause I, I want to get some real time feedback from those here in the chat room about something like this. We had a good conversation. <laughs> Emily says two words, Jim, fanny pack, bring it back. <laughs> I would no. love that. I'm we would. Oh, really? Man. Oh yeah. If yeah. those came back in style, hell yeah. I'd be all about really? that. Uh, oh, I, I can't, totally I can't, I can't do fanny. Now I'm not going to be the one to bring it back in style, but if it, if it did, <laughs> I, I would, the, uh, I'd be I all think, about it. I think the kids are doing it. Yeah, well, then I'm going to get on board. I think they are. I think like fanny packs are back with the kids, okay. which is just kind of crazy. One of my thoughts is, you know, I carry this silly thing around with me and I've seen some cases where the back slides open and you can get two or three cards in there. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of a minimalist when I have to be with my wallet, right? So I I really just want to carry my driver's license and one credit card, to be honest. There aren't too many other things that I need. Maybe um, maybe a Metro card when I'm in D.C. or some of those kinds of things. But um, I've seen those kinds of wallets where it's in the back. Again, I put that link in the show notes or in the, show, in the, in the chat room for it. I got a lot of negative, Mike, a lot of negative feedback on well, that you, kind of case. I was, I was just going to show you. So I have mine. It's here somewhere, but whatever. I won't, I'm not going to be able to find it. But yeah, because I was probably the first. Well, yeah, it's in the box of jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we might, I might have had the same phone as you. So I was going to say you could actually borrow it to see if you like mm, it. Mm. But I was, I think, the first one to give you the negative feedback on that. You you gave me the negative. You were the first to give me that? Yeah. It It was, why didn't you like it? So, well, first of all, only two cards. So it's, we're still not to the point. We'll get there with like Apple Pay and stuff like that. But we're still not to the point where you can leave your Hy-Vee Fuel Saver or, you know, all those other cards at home yet. And so I just, there wasn't enough space. And then it really added a lot of weight to the phone. And at first I didn't mind it. At first I was like, okay, whatever. But you realize that, you know, it's just, makes that phone a lot heavier. The more you're using your phone, I, I just didn't care for it. And then the back flap on mine, it would like, you'd, 
take it out and it would it would open up things would hit it and it would open so it just yeah. wasn't the best yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best the ones i'm looking at on amazon about 20 bucks so <laughs> not the most expensive things in the world i would have to replace my case and so it's one of those deals where you're oh, and also, that's why i didn't like it yeah. yes because you have you can't do the whole if you have a special case that you have a magnet in or something like right. that you can't use that right. yeah yep. yeah well the the reason what got me thinking of that is there's been a whole bunch of um, advertising on Facebook to me about these secure wallets that you can have now that have like an RFID uh, shield in there. So you can put your cards, the ones you don't want to have, you know, you the, the ones you want to block, you know, they've got the right. blockers, the radio blockers on them. And then there's a section that's left open. So if you have your bus card or your Metro card or things that you want to scan, there's a section in the front where the you can you can have that. But it's basically like I'm used to having a wallet that like the phone doesn't bend. Like I'm showing the phone, Emily, and it doesn't bend, right? The, my wallet bends to my butt, right? It it yeah. it kind of cre after a while, you know, it's like really worn in and it's just comfortable back there. Yeah. I would feel weird about having a hard shell wallet, because that's what really what this thing is. It's a hard shell where you, you know, you kind of pull open the front and it flips down like this and you have access to all your cards. You can, they say you can put coins and money and stuff in there as well. But I was, Mike, I was a little apprehensive about going with a hard shell wallet. I would have been too, especially if you're storing that in your back pocket. Yeah. Yeah. It just, yeah. That's just kind of, I don't know. I, that's, that was just a struggle. And, and so I'm kind of used to that guy's wallet. That's a leather moldable, you know, if you oh, take yeah. it. Right. So I'm the same way. That was just the thought I had because, well, one, I don't know how serious we should take this security about blocking your your credit cards from people coming by and stealing the information off them. I don't know how true or real that thing is. I've heard stories that it is, and you should. Sarah, my wife, has a sleeve that she puts around her credit cards. She also has a purse that stores the contents of the sun. So, like, you know. <laughs> She has everything in there. It's everything. Mary, Mary Poppins purse. Totally. I've got, I've been lost in there for a couple of days, you know, I had to, had to call my way out, but um, it was, so she, you know, she puts each of the credit cards in a sleeve that's supposed to be, you know, protect against that. Right. Whatever that is. So I don't know, Mike, I was just, it was, it was one of those thoughts I had, like, you know, do I, do I ditch? I would like a, because I do get a lot of dust going all the way back to the beginning. I get a lot of dust and dirt. <laughs> I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <laughs> I get a lot of dust and dirt on my wallet. I thought maybe a more contained wallet would, you know, something that closes up yeah, would, would do better. And maybe I could get some new technology kind of in the process. And then I had that thought of like, really, couldn't I just move most of my cards onto my phone? Like really, what do I need the physical card for when I have Apple pay or when I have, yeah, you know, for fill places in that the don't, take the card, don't take Apple pay. Yeah. Well, again, I guess Which is, is, that still, a lot. is it? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I've been surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I just got, um, so my son, uh, I help him pay his college, uh, you know, his college loans. And he had been bringing cash over, you know, every month. Hey, it's time for you to bring it over. You know, we don't use a check. Just bring your cash over. And he was like, can we just use Venmo? <laughs> Did you like it? I do. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. love it. Our whole family has it. And it's it's been great just to pay each other. And But you know what's even better now is we started switching over to using Apple Pay and Messages. If yeah. he has an iPhone, you just, in the, in the Messages app, just say $25, Jim, done. And it just sends it through Apple Pay. And we've been using that a lot, too. It's been great. Yeah. Yeah. He's an Android guy and Venmo just works for us. So that's yeah. probably something we're going to go with. Uh, other Jim in the chat room says, I have a minimalist wallet. It's called my old leather wallet. I carry a driver's license, health insurance card, one credit card and use it for biking. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's true. like the health insurance card and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of stuff you won't have room for. Yeah. Mike, uh, Mike Howard says, I just moved cash using the bank's app, Bank of America. You could. The apps are getting a little more sophisticated. I've made connections between my credit union at Gallup and my Bank of the West bank account, and I can just move that money. I just invested some in at Coinbase, and I just you know you log into the Coinbase and pulled fifty bucks over after Edward encouraged me to dollar cost average into the market, which by the way I bought at 
some Ethereum at 405 and today it's at 340 something. Yeah, all the crypto is just straight but, down. Um, yeah. Uh, so other Jim says, you guys see your, your Venmo history is open. I don't know what that means. What do you mean? Is it? It's open. It's open. Yeah, like it's, like, it's almost like a news feed. No, like um, your friends can see like what you paid other people and like the comment really? on it. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. You can, you can make it private, okay. but it. But I think by default, it's it's open. It's open. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know, I, I guess you're. It says, yeah, on the, the privacy screen, uh, for Venmo, you're in control. You decide whether uh, who can you or you decide who can see your payments. So right, you can go in your privacy settings. So maybe I should um, go in. I, I'd make one payment. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um. But. Yeah, so I've been Venmo. We've we've switched over to Venmo for that. That's been a little bit easier. So I don't know. I'm still. I kind of haven't decided. You know, my wallet's kind of thick. I used to inside the wallet used to be just a little flap. You know that when you'd have your driver's license thing in, and that actually was my wallet for a couple of years. And I did. I carried a driver's license and a credit card, and that was it. Now, so maybe it would work for you. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Jim says. Yeah, you don't. Uh, you don't. <laughs> you don't want anybody to see your payment to Pornhub, and yeah. that's uh, that's. Oh, well, maybe you do. I don't know. It, hey, no judgment. No judgment here at the average guy. There, there could be some weirder ones than that too. You know, a lot weirder. Just to yeah. be honest. Just to be honest. Um, Mike, let's talk. You you started uh, the show. I think we talked about this. You had kind of mentioned that you've been doing some work, a lot of work on your home network there. Yeah. Yep. And you even have a new networking, some new networking map software. Let's talk a little bit about that. So I, yes, when I got the new Cisco switch in, I started doing a lot of VLANs, which I hadn't done VLANs before. So I really needed to do a network map just to, for my own sanity, right? Keeping track of things, have a visual representation of the network. I have enough devices on the network now that it, it was kind of necessary. So I started to look around for software. Now there's, Software that you can pay for, obviously, that does this automatically, right? It scans your network, finds the devices, and creates these maps for you. But uh, in unless the chat room found something I didn't, it's hard to find one that actually works really well. It's free, uh, and that actually does a good job of doing it accurately. I guess some of the free ones are free accurate. So I just did it manually, but I use Draw.io. They're for Mac, Windows, might even be for Linux. I'm not sure, but for sure for Mac and Windows. And it was a really cool free piece of software. It has all of the symbols already in there for you. So, you know, all the standard, you know, the computer, the server, the all those symbols that you would use to create a network map. And it's it's free. And it worked out really, really well, actually. I created one. And I'll, I'll go ahead and I can share. Oh, and I think, yeah, you're showing it in the web browser. So you can actually yeah. use it in the web. I downloaded it to my computer, but you can use it straight on the web and save out to your uh, different cloud services. And then I will. You want to bring yours up, and I'll switch yeah. mine over. Okay. Mine up here. That's kind of cool. You can just do right from the web. Yeah. So a uh, pretty cool piece of software there. And then this is what you end up with. So if you guys can see that, so I, you know, I just you're not showing anything, right? You, no, that, no, that no. There's, there's okay. no public IP. Okay, no, it, I mean this is all private IP. So you guys can right, see it. Right, so, right. so I have my stuff separated out. So I said, you know, you got your WAN and a PF Sense, and then into the Cisco switch. And then I, I laid it out so I can visually see. Okay, what VLAN was that? Okay, what subnet? You know, go down here. Okay, there's the guest. There's a segregated, and I can see all my connections where they connect, or if they connect to the Unify access point and how they connect and stuff like that. So yeah, all this. I mean, this took me maybe 20 minutes to do in Draw.io. It was super quick. Uh, you just drag in the different images you want, and it, you go from there. So super easy to do, super cool. And I thought it was nice that it was free. That's always nice when it's free. Yeah, yeah. It's and then um, I the I'm assuming the web version, same same functionality. Uh, I don't know. I yeah. used my I used the downloaded version, but I'm guessing it's the same exact I thing. Would, I would think so. Let me let me. We'll say create a new diagram. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it looks it looks pretty. And it's got the one thing I noticed is you do have to go into the settings and on the symbols, the default ones, they don't show you very many, but they have a bunch in the background that they're just not showing you. And you just go and check mark the ones you want. They got a bunch of arrows. They got gateways. They got events. Yeah, it's uh, a it's a poor man's. Well, I don't want to even compare it to Visio because it's not even close to Visio. But yeah. imagine that sort of. Well, for uh, most people, it's enough though. Right. right. 
Yep, it's, it's more than enough. Just trying to get some diagrams. That and the thing I liked is it's you. It's hard to find that for Mac. I was doing this on my MacBook, hmm. so it's nice to have a cross platform, and especially because you can do it in the web. So you could probably do it from any any device. Yeah, that's cool. Well, draw.io, You can check it out on the web. Pretty good little application available for you out there. Actually, if you use Google Docs, it looks just like a Google Doc. To be honest with you, if you go in there, it almost looks like it's built on top of Google Docs. So if you're used to that that look, uh, that should get you in there pretty well. Draw dot I O. Mike, um, you know, we haven't talked about this in a while, but uh, you know, I'm an iPhone guy. You're an iPhone guy. Um, I'm on an 8S. You're on uh what are you 10. on now? 10? Yep. Are there some new phones coming? There are. Yeah. So speculation is kind of getting to that point. We always get to August and Apple does their events in September. We get to August. And we've got a pretty good idea. We even see some really well-made like uh, models of what they're going to do. And so the speculation right now is that they're going to have three different, three new phones, essentially you're going to have, and they're all based on the iPhone 10. So imagine your iPhone 10 is your base model. They're going to have essentially an iPhone 10 plus is what I'm going to call it. It's a bigger version of the iPhone 10. And then they're going to have a smaller version of the iPhone 10, and then they're going to have this standard form factor. So this one will obviously get a chipset upgrade, and then you'll have a bigger version and a smaller version. But this seems to be the form factor they're going with is the 10 now. So it's going to be, I think, almost all. I don't know if they will do any upgrades to any of the other versions, but I think they're sticking with the you know no home button model of the iPhone 10. And I have to say, I switched over and I did not expect to like it as much as I do. I really like it. I really got it because my old phone was acting up and I thought, well, I might as well go with the 10, something new. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to see the new phones because I would honestly go for a plus. I think I could go for a bigger phone because this phone, when I got it, was actually smaller than my old plus, but it had a bigger, same size screen, right? Because the screen, there's no bezel to it. So they can do that all in a smaller form factor so if you can imagine having a plus size iphone 10 i think that would be nice uh, do you think they fix all the problems it wasn't you know the 10s were not the smoothest rollout there were some complaints about them you think i, they, hope so. they... I think it's been a pretty good experience for me and i think that everyone who's been using the new beta i think actually the bigger deal here is going to be ios 12 mm -hmm. i think ios 12 is going to solve a lot of just the headaches that some of us have had i've noticed that on on my 10 i'll be listening to an audiobook in the car not even interacting with the phone at all and all of a sudden the audio just stop and the app like force quits. I don't know if it's an audible thing, but just small issues here and there. So I, I hear that people on the beta are actually having a really good experience. So I think iOS 12 will be really good. And I hope all of the issues are solved with the next round of phones. I think so, because, you know, the first time you do a new form factor and especially the, a big upgrade like the 10 was, I mean, this was a lot of stuff to do to a, a phone for new. I mean, the face ID, the no home button, that was a lot. So hopefully they've got that all figured out now. The kinks worked out. Uh, yeah, for it. Yeah. So we'll figure I, all that out in mid-September at their, they haven't announced a date yet, but they will have a September event. And when are they, so will, will iOS 12 go live at the event? Is that what they do? They're just like, Hey, it's available today. Is that what Usually they do? A little bit after. Um, and then yeah, pre-orders will probably be that day and the phones will start to ship. Um, at some point. Yeah. Pretty quick. They're usually pretty quick about yeah, that. And, and I would, I would imagine I got some advice when, I was moving from the seven or had, did I have a six? Mm, I think I had a six and I was moving. I could have gone eight or 10. And uh, the, the advice I got was go eight. I went eight plus because 10 was having so many problems or, or just not as solid as that had been. Maybe it wasn't, wasn't a, and you know, it wasn't a, um, you know, a deal killer. But uh, the 8S has been, or 8 Plus, sorry. The 8 Plus has been rock solid for me. Like this phone literally never runs out of battery. It literally works every time. It literally does what it's supposed to do. It, I mean, it is it is like the final product on something that has been honed for 10 years. There right. everything just works. Like it's great. Well, that's and why from, I had to switch things up. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. like, dang, this thing works now. Boring. It's it's like you and us. It's like you and me with burst. I know. Like, I know. Oh, it just works now. We're gonna talk about that in the post. Show. We'll talk a little bit about that in the post show. Uh, it's gotten kind of boring, but um, yeah, no. And I, I'm I'm somebody. I think it might have been Brian Hour or somebody said, you know, just go with the eight plus, and then by the time you're ready to upgrade, they'll be past that ten, and it'll be an eleven, or it'll be a ten something, or it'll there'll be two versions of it available for you. Man, I think that was a great call. 
for me. And it's a good point. I, I've been the the wife and all the kids have jumped onto a Pixel. So they all got Pixel 2s and they're loving Android. And that's a great little phone. It's not it's not big enough for me, to be honest with you. I need the bigger, they got the smaller ones. But um I I I've been tempted because Project Fi is so, so reasonable from a pricing standpoint. You are know, they on Project Fi? They are. They are. 30 bucks, you know, 10 bucks for each, I think each gig over 30 or something like that. Or Something very, very reasonable. We're paying almost nothing for Sarah's phone. I mean, it's ridiculous based on what we were paying on Sprint. And I paid for the phone outright. So that helps too, right? There's no lease. Yeah. We just pay for the phone outright. And um, so, you know, at one point I thought, well, maybe I'll make the jump back to Android. They're all on Android. I can go on Project Fi. And then I think, God, my phone just is never a problem anymore. You know? So you've gotten to that point where it's just once you have it and it works, you don't want to leave it. Mm -hmm. Emily's on a Pixel and she loves hers. I listen, I, I I deal with Pixel users all the time and their phones just work too. It's just I don't know if I want it for the price. I don't know if I don't make the jump. I would have to be really burned by Apple at this point make to make the switch. To make the switch. Yeah. yeah. And Jim yeah. uh Jim Kenny brings up a good point. He says now the new Samsung costs a grand. Can we also stop complaining about the cost of the iPhone 10? <laughs> That's true. The, the 10 was the first one to kind of get up to that price point, but we're starting to see that that's kind of going to be where it's at. So now the question is, where is that iPhone 10 plus going to sit at price wise, right? It's, I mean, if we're already at a grand, it's going to be 1200 for that plus. It's, it's getting up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm good. Like I'm good at the moment. In fact, uh, on Sprint, the leases drop. You can then, um, at that point, pay the residual, you know, and it's your phone. And I didn't do that the last time. I'm also on the I can upgrade. I'm on that plan Every with Sprint year. too, or I could upgrade yeah. if I want to. So I'm going to start getting, I think I'm coming up to the year. I'm going to start getting, I guess maybe I'll wait and see what this, um, what this new, what these new announcements are. And uh, if it's a if it's a really good phone, and it gets if it get re reviews out the gate. I'm in a, I think I'm in a spot where it's like December for me. So oh, that'd be a perfect time for yeah. them because it'll be out long enough. People will have time to play with it. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim says he keeps his three years. Once the battery starts giving me issues, yeah, it's time to upgrade. Three years is a pretty good cycle, and I, I you could even do four. I think with some of the iPhones, mm, um, four is getting to push it. I think. Yeah, but it depends on how you treat your phone. True. And how I, and how much you rely on your phone. Right. right. No, right on, right on. Three's a good number. Uh, I like that, but I don't know. Um, we'll have to, we'll kind of have to see where, where things go. I, I may watch these Apple announcements a little more closely. I've been tempted, you know, I am a Garmin watch wearer and it's a, it's the dumbest Garmin watch they ever made. I mean, it, it really just does, it just does runs, bikes, GPS. It's a great watch when I bought it years ago. Uh, for 250 bucks, which is pretty expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I got it at Target for 199, so not too bad. But, um, but I'm kind of itching, kind of itching for an Apple, Apple Watch. Watch. Yeah, I kind of am, Mike. I've been um, all about them. We actually, it's kind of funny. I, I had never for some. Well, I didn't work out very much, that's why. But I had never really yeah. used the activity stuff right. on there, and. Right. I had never connected with my friends on, if you have the watch, you can connect with them on the activity sharing. And then it, you get all the alerts. Hey, this person got to their goals. This person got to their goals. Where are you at with your goals? We have had so much fun with it. Hannah's mom got a watch. And now all of a sudden me and my mother-in-law and Hannah and my friends, we're all just competing on a daily basis for that activity. And it is kind of cool, right? Like that, it kind of makes you go around like her mom. So my mother-in-law will go take, they live on a farm, but she'll go like take a lap around the backyard if she hasn't finished her circles yet. So it's kind of fun. A little competitive yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. You know, I've been wearing not as much as I should, but I've been wearing a Fitbit and that when I do wear that, I am more conscious of my steps, you know, right. buzzes me and says, Hey, Hey fatty, get up. You know, right. you got 110 steps to get to your goal. Well, that's kind of helpful. You know, that, that stuff kind of works. So I don't know. I, I'll have to decide. I'll have to think about it. Um, I've been reviewing uh, because of Burst, and this won't be a Burst conversation, but because of Burst, Burst and I have all these Burst um, miners running, sometimes that Burst application would quit on me. And it always would quit, Mike, at like 930 in the morning. So I would be down here. 
I'd be drinking coffee, eating my breakfast, looking at the minor run. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm good. I'm set. I get in the car. As I'm closing the garage door, there's a switch that the dro- the garage door hits that shuts all the miners off. <laughs> Not really, but it would seem like, you know, yeah, right. it, it seemed like, uh, and I wouldn't know, and I'm not coming back home for it, you know. And so it'd be, no, it would be, down. be down all day. It would be right? down all day. Yeah. So Ken and I have been doing, we were doing a little bit of research, and we found this cool little app. I'll throw it out in chat. It's in the chat room, too. Um, it's it's a cool little app. You can just run super light, super easy. It doesn't take a lot to do, but it's called Restart on Crash, which is just kind of an amazing little app. If you've got something that you you got an an executable that you need to have running all the time and i didn't you know we i've been running this maybe for 3 or 4 weeks and i didn't want to really want to say anything until like it actually worked give it a full test yeah. yeah and and man i tell you what it's been really nice when the application gets all kind of gunked up and it's not working right you just close it and you don't have to do anything it just automatically restarts it if during the middle of the day i'm not here and the thing crashes or stops responding it's smart enough. If it stops responding, it's smart enough to go in and kill all the process. It counts to 60 seconds, which is totally configurable. And then it restarts it. And smart. I thought, well, this is kind of cool. And then, like I said, I've been troubleshooting and sometimes I just need to close that freaking thing to free up some memory. So I close it and it just auto restarts. I don't have to go back in and click and click and click and click. It just auto starts. You can turn that on or off. It sets a log. You can set some settings for it. The beauty of it was, especially for mining, I was getting Windows restarts and it would just go back to the login screen and it will restart that for you. Um, uh, we even not logged into Windows, but it basically runs it as a service. Now there's a lot of other ways to do this in Windows. I did not want to figure it out. Like I wanted an application. I it's literally, easy. yeah, yeah. I was literally running up. I was up and running on this thing um, in, I don't know, a minute and then it, it we tested it out over the course of a couple of days and it, the thing just freaking worked um jim is asking me which miner i'm using i'm a creep miner guy and so it works really good with creep doesn't work as well with blago or however you pronounce that blago um, because that requires some other settings to get it done but creep works really well with it let me encourage you this it's not just a mining thing if you've got some systems that are dependent on things that you want up and running all the time and I hadn't really thought about this in a while, but here you go. Restart yeah, on I, crash. I neither, I'm, sure I'm sure on every person's network, they have stuff they need to, to keep yeah. that up. Yeah. So cool. pretty pretty handy, uh, pretty handy tool to use. Uh, try it, test it. You just point it to the executable. It's got some configuration in it, super light. It the, the cool thing is, is I set it to show it. If it restarts itself, I say just leave it open so I know when I come home. I'll look at it and say, oh, there's been a restart. I can look in the logs and kind of say, oh, here's why it restarted. So um, cool little app, Restart on Crash. Links in the show notes. I threw it out in the chat room as well if you are interested. Mike, another conversation that happened, and I don't know why, but our podcast always defaults back to barbecue. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I don't know why, but but uh, who was well, This was you, right? This you was found, me. Yeah. You found the K-Rig pressure smoker? I had oh. never seen one of these things. Yeah, the K-Rig pressure smoker so imagine a smoker uh so imagine like a typical smoker but this one is actually a pressure cooker smoker combo so if you ever used a pressure cooker i mean this thing seals on both sides it's like a tank you guys can head to the facebook group i actually shared it out there if you want to see it but uh yeah it's like a huge i can't tell what it looks like like it looks like a smoker but it also looks like a pressure cooker and essentially this thing's got an engine underneath it's got like a generator so you're you're pull starting this engine and it vacuum seals that chamber but apparently it has some way to get the smoke in there but it, so it cooks this stuff in like a tenth of the time you can do steaks and pulled pork butts in like half an hour instead of 10 hours so i don't know it's, it's kind of cool it's extremely pricey it was four grand uh but i thought you know mr mark robs i thought that you know he's the, he's a the smoker guy he needs one so Ooh. it's uh, it is the cool. weirdest looking thing it looks like a it looks like a torpedo tube in a, in a, you know. In yeah. A, Cause uh, they have like these two trays that slide in and out. So you don't open it like a normal grill. Like you open the end and you slide the trays out where everything yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. It's got two, two racks. They're maybe the width of a chicken. Yeah. And yeah. you can, you slide those in and out. I imagine they could make that thing a little bit bigger. It's probably expensive. Cause it's probably custom, you know, probably, probably maybe custom building each one of these. 
it looks like you can see underneath from this picture. Uh, there's like there's a propane tank under there. It looks like, <laughs> yeah. or maybe that's an air tank. I'm not sure. So I don't know how this thing works, but it was extremely cool. Uh, and I thought. I, I, I watched the video. Up. I watched the video of it, and it says it even takes because it takes less time and it's pressure. It takes less smoke, so you're not burning through that much wood to oh, get the, the, the smoke. So you're getting some okay. of the same kind of uh, you're getting the same kind of smoke flavor, but because it's pressurized, it's really penetrating and really getting in there. And you just don't need as much. So uh, pretty cool. We, we won't spend too much time on it. I'm not sure any of us are going to drop four grand um uh on it to to make this thing work but it it was cool it's one of those things uh here late in the podcast uh, that we get to bring in oh yeah say kind of like hey uh, have you seen that by the way this is in our facebook group so if you haven't joined us out there it's a good place in and uh, the average guy.tv no yeah the average guy.tv slash facebook will get you to that group and then i can uh, just ask to be invited in i'll let you in and some pretty cool things that uh, we post out there during the week. Mike, you have also, you posted in the group that you bought a new Cisco managed switch. Like, were you trying to, were you trying to one up me? I mean, <laughs> I just bought this TP link and I thought I was I cool. You're always well, trying to one up me, right? Well, I, I needed a POE switch. And then I was looking and if you get into those and I was like, well, I kind of want to replace, cause I had the same, I think we had the same TP link switch pretty much like the 24 port switch. Yep. And I wanted POE. I mean, they start to get really expensive, like $200. I'm like, okay, let's just search on eBay. We'll see what we can find. So I ended up, it was just the luckiest thing in the world. Uh, I was the only one to bid on this. I got a Cisco 3750G. So that's the gigabit version. That's what the G on the end of that's for. So uh, it's a 48 port managed POE switch for $20 on eBay. Now, now what's like regular retail on something like that? Well, so this is an older model, the 3750G. It's a Catalyst, the Cisco Catalyst series. So it's older, um, but everywhere else I was looking is like 200, 180, 200, 250. Lo local or did you, was, did you have to have it shipped? No, it, it, so it was $10 shipping, so wow. 30 total. Okay. Yeah, I get the, it was the, so the reason I think is because it's functional, fully functional, everything works. The front plate is missing. Hmm. Uh, so cosmetically, it, I mean, actually I didn't know what was missing until yeah. I saw it, but yeah. uh, yeah. it's fine. I'm like, I don't need a front. It sits in my server rack. What, what do I care? So right. that was kind of a, it was mainly just the deal on the price that I couldn't believe. And for a 48 port switch, that's, that's a pretty good deal. And um, you were specifically looking for POE, right? That's I was, what I was looking for, you. Yeah, I was looking for POE. And then I thought, right. you know what? If I'm going to do POE, I should probably just do manage because I've been wanting to VLAN out, you know, set up my VLANs, segregate my network, do all sorts of things like that. And then on top of that, I was like, oh, Cisco, perfect. I have never worked with Cisco gear. I need to learn their CLI and, and how you interact with that. So I uh, got in there and a bunch of guys from the Facebook group helped me. So thank you guys if you guys reached out to me, helped me out. So I learned the Cisco commands, got everything up and running. It's actually pretty easy. So if you've been wanting a cheaper switch, you can find one of these on eBay, those Cisco switches. And don't be scared off by having to program it uh, because the config is pretty easy from the command line interface, it's actually, it's not too bad at all. You can watch one or two or three YouTube videos and you can get it set up pretty easy. Uh, but yeah, I got that up and running, which allowed me to, since I did the VLANs, right, completely revamp the network, get the security cameras on one, uh, put a guest network up, the miner, my other stuff. So it was, it was just a lot of fun. We played around and I, I love just tinkering with my network. Yeah. So got that up and running. And, and part of that, right, we're talking about the security cameras, was, and this is actually, I've never gotten more response on the Facebook group than this. So I posted a video out on our Facebook page of, I took a Raspberry Pi and I hooked it up to our TV and I ran this software, uh, this little app that someone wrote for the Raspberry Pi. It's, it was actually really hard to find, but it's a really cool app. It's all it is. It's a basic grid view for your security cameras, full screen grid view for your IP security cameras. So it doesn't tie into site hound or anything it's just if you have the rtsp stream uh you're good to go you can plug it in it pulls the stream in and it, it checkerboards them and that's exactly what i wanted because site hound doesn't do a good job of that and so i i posted that video i think i had six people from our group because i said message me if you have any questions i had like six people reach out and say hey what's the link well how do i get that so apparently a lot of you guys are into tech more or into security cameras more than we thought so. no i think a lot are into security cameras which which 
Raspberry Pi version did you use or what are you? I was originally with? using my, so now I have two up and running. I will use, I have an original Raspberry Pi. I don't know. Is it a version two? It's pretty old. Maybe it's, it's really old. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yep. So that worked just fine. Uh, it struggled a little bit to start it up, but then once it gets up and running, it's fine. And then I got one of the new Model 3 or version three model Bs. And that one works great. That's when actually I, I set it up. So it's actually right above me on this TV up here. And it's actually the least amount of lag I've ever seen with any of these cameras. So it's better than the native app that comes with the camera. It's better than Sighthound. It's better than opening it up in a web browser. It is, hmm. I will watch it and I'm looking out the window at the car driving by. And I mean, it's barely off by like fractions of a second. So it's, it's wow. Yeah, it works really well. I don't how know much, if that's how much did you pay for the Raspberry Pi? Thirty bucks, I think. So now you had one of them. So I think Sighthound. I paid what's the sixty? Uh, yeah, is that sixty? You get two HD. Is that sixty one time? Yes. Okay. Well, and then if you want updates, updates. past a year, it's like it's something a year. I don't know what really it is a year. Yeah, I mean, so in theory, I could be running this off instead of using Sighthound. Does it do any recording or is it no, just showing? No, okay. this is just viewing. Okay. Just okay. viewing. So it's meant for those because a lot of times when you have Blue Iris or Sighthound, you've got the main server, but then you've got TVs on your network or places that you would love to see your grid view, uh, but you don't have, you know, Blue Iris and Sighthound. That's just not their functionality. So this is perfect because you just anywhere you can plug in a Raspberry Pi. I will say run Ethernet. It works a lot better. I did use the Wi-Fi dongle um, and on the Pi on the pie yeah. and it, it just it was i mean it was okay but it wasn't the best once i plugged into ethernet it was it was amazing so, so if you're talking just purely a display port so to speak just a tv that's just going to show your cameras yeah this could do it and you're, you're not this isn't replacing sighthound this is just a display in addition yeah in addition or right. in addition to or you know if you don't care about recording which i think you want the recording you could just view a camera right mm -hmm. if you wanted to just be able to see if you wanted a um, who's on the other side of my door thing. It would work pretty well for that. The, uh, so the way I set it up actually in my living room was on the Xbox one, the Xbox one has a HDMI in for like your cable box. And then on all of the Xbox remotes, they have the one guide button. And what that button is, is it jumps over that second HDMI. Well, we use our Xbox for everything. So now if I ever want to check the cameras, that pie is plugged into that HDMI in, I just hit the one guide button on my Xbox remote and it jumps over to my cameras. And so it's pretty flawless. Whenever we we're watching something and I do, I'll hear something outside. I'll just hit the one guide button and there's all, all my cameras and it works really well. So if you hear something, you see something, you want to know what's going on outside. Yeah. One button puts it on the TV. That's pretty cool and pretty yeah. cheap. Super cheap. And right? if you wanted it, yeah, without the Xbox, you could also just, you know, plug it in and switch your right. input on your TV. Right. So yeah, yeah 30 no. bucks and you would, you could be able to put those wherever you want. Sure. I'm sure you'd help anybody with that if they were thinking about doing something like that. I just get a monitor. Does a does the monitor size matter? Does it automatically size to the monitor? So, Can you set how many boxes? Yeah. So that is, I mean, right, we're on, we're on Linux. Uh, you're, you're editing uh, the configuration file. Okay. So, you know, you're in the terminal, you nano the file, and you're going in and he has online, he has all of his defaults he says hey do you have a 720p monitor and you want four cameras here's what i would use and here's where you edit and it's very clear like the configuration file is super easy you just here's the rtsp stream here's how many windows nice. uh so but I, I will say that part it'll take you a little bit it'll take you you know 20 30 minutes just to kind of figure that out how it's but then once you've done it once well i got my second pie up and running in no time and okay. my second pie was actually down here and this is only a 720p it's a super old little flat screen tv where I was upstairs with 1080p and it does matter because it's it's telling it directly what size the windows are so you can't run the 1080p config on a 720 because it'll, it'll be zoomed in you'll you won't see all the picture wow cool yeah well that's a, a good way to push you know at least monitoring that's one of those things that you know i've got a i've got an i've got actually i do have an extra monitor that's sitting down here that's doing nothing right or the one behind yeah. you right yeah yeah, that's what I love about it is you're in your basement like me, right? I'm in my basement mm -hmm. right now. So I have my monitor up here because I can't hear anything up there, so I can just right. I'm always seeing what's going on. Kind of see what's outside happening. the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were contacted um, this week. Speaking of cameras, we were contacted this week. I've been talking about. Let me see if I can find that link really quick. I wasn't 
planning on talking about this in the show here, but let's see if I can do this really quick. Um, interesting, you know, cameras are everything right now. And if you guys, uh, let's let's just do this live and in real time. Let me send you out to Snap Pro. So if you go out to Zmodo, here, I'll throw this link in the chat room so you guys can see it. Uh, it'll be in the show notes for those that are listening to the live version of this. And I just somehow have lost the chat room. There we go. If you guys want to take a peek at this, this is kind of an interesting, uh, did it actually work? Let's try it. Uh, no, it didn't, it didn't copy right. Hold on one, zero, one sec here, Mike. Um, oh, <laughs> that's funny. I, instead of, um, shoot, instead of copying and pasting it, I copied it and copied it. That doesn't, <laughs> uh, I copied your, um, the link from your, your switch. That doesn't work. So let's do that over here and we'll throw it in the chat room, which I am just being a total doofus tonight. Here we go. Let's get this one over here. Makes for riveting audio. There you go. There's a link in the chat room. The So Zmodo, I think, is how they pronounce it. These guys are in a little bit of a Kickstarter um, campaign right now, but it's a kind of an all-in-one camera unit that is both goes indoors and outdoors. It has a battery in it that's supposed to last up to a season. That's what they said. I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know what season means. Maybe it's once a quarter. You got to pull that thing down and recharge it, which is... Mm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about those uh, being able to do it, but it's basically, it's all Wi-Fi enabled and it's really just stick it anywhere and use it type thing. Easy setup, easy to use, connects to everything. These guys are really trying to make a run. And I, I, I told them, you know, they're like, Hey, can we come on your show and talk? And I'm like, not till I get a few of these to test, but this is just an example of where the, where the home security market is today. Lots of folks are trying it. Lots of money being spent in it. And it's hard sometimes. Like you're, what you're doing is not average guy stuff, Mike. Right? No, no. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not, but I wish it was because I was just actually telling uh, Jim in the chat, he was talking about he wanted to get a system set up. I am a huge proponent of like, if you can at all do your own system, run Blue Iris or Sighthound, um, you have way more flexibility on cameras, right? Like Jim, if you want to go out of camera, you just go pick any IP camera you want. You know, you can even get a cheapo one because you don't care. It's all oh, it's, it's the base, but I have like a twenty dollar one. I don't really care, and you're not paying a monthly fee. Um, like if you had Ring or you had Arlo, any of those. So, you know, I, I'm I like the camera systems. They're very easy and right. It's the ease of use. It's the ease of setup. Um, but there's just a lot of da and a lot of those are Wi-Fi too which it's fine. I actually have two of my cameras running off Wi-Fi, which are fine. But when you start to get five, six, seven, eight, nine cameras up, it's kind of, kind of testing. But it's interesting. This company reminded me a lot of Arlo. Arlo has all pure wireless cameras now too. So you pull them down every two months and charge them, right? Um, and I can't even remember, remember to change the battery in my smoke detector, much less pull my security cameras down. I've struggled a little bit to monitor my sight hound. You know, I've got that one camera, it's plugged in, mm -hmm. it's the front door. And I've, I've struggled a little bit to remember to look at that thing from time to time. So there's definitely some things I need to get set up. I've had trouble getting the alerts right. I've had, cause you know, it picks up every car. We have a super busy street. So it picks up every car that goes by unless I'm very intentional. I kind of need to go back through and set it up again, um, kind of from scratch. Now knowing what I know, right. you know, just go in there and set it up from scratch. So it is definitely, you know, th this DIY home security idea is not as easy. I mean, everybody is trying to make it that the average guy can set it up. And it's still pretty complicated. You know, it's not it the best solutions. Like you say, if you really want easy, you want to go Wi-Fi, but that's not the, really the best way. And how secure are these things? And are they getting hacked? And I'd rather run cables, just to be honest with you, too. I'd ra rather run power to them. I don't, I don't want to have to go pull them down and charge them. Yeah. You know, so... Yep. Some, some interesting the, things to think about. Snaking the cable is a pain in the butt, right? Like it's, it's terrible and it's, you're up in the attic and it's hot, but it's worth it once you get it done. Yeah. I, I, I always like, I hardwire everything. Right. No. And I, I, I think I prefer that too. We're moving. So I'm not going to really, I'm not going to really put too much no. into this no. house. 
the guys at Stamp Pro may send us a couple to test out. So uh, yeah, maybe, I'd be interested and, with that. You know, yeah. I want to try some of these, those kind of systems out. We'll see how they go. Yeah, if you want us to test it out, send go go to the go to the Zmoto account and in their customer service, tell them you should really let the home gadget geek guys test your stuff because that's that's what gets people moving on stuff. I you know you. They asked me for some numbers and I'm like, well, it doesn't sound that impressive, but we have guys that spend money. And so again, I'm not Jones in for a test. I don't want to keep them to be honest. Oh, I'll but, test any IP camera. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're, you're big in that and it would be good to, uh, it'd be good. I'd, I'd, I'd give it a try here. I too would give it a lift just to kind of see how it works. So I don't know your thoughts. Send me an email, Jim at the average guy. TV. Mike, anything else? Uh, you had one more thought in here about the Samsung wireless charger duo. Oh, that was just back up with the Apple. Now, I think it's funny yeah, that yeah. Samsung came out with, if you guys heard Apple last year, actually announced their charging pad. So now that all of their devices, the phone, the watches, uh, and then the AirPods actually are going to get a new case, they all support wireless charging. Apple's coming out with a pad and you just lay all your stuff on there at night. It's about, you know, yay big. You plug one cable in, you lay your stuff down and it charges. They announced it last year and we have not seen it. Uh, but Samsung today announced their pretty much same sort of thing, except for there's tilts up. So you can still see your phone without looking over it uh, a little bit of an advanced version of it. There's also, we don't know when it's coming out or our price, but they announced it and you know, they could release theirs before Apple. And we heard about Apple's last year and we still haven't seen it. Isn't that weird. Yeah. Well, and I, apparently well, they've been having trouble with, I mean, it's hard when you have a whole pad and they want you to be able to lay it anywhere on the pad and have it start charging. That's apparently it's a, it's a fairly complicated yeah. engineering feat to get that to happen. You know, I used to charge my Palm Pre wirelessly. You know, it had a pad that you would put it on. It would just, you know, it was magnetic. Yep. And it would sit on that pad. That thing was awesome. When I bought the phone, I'm showing my iPhone 8 Plus here. I was, I told the guy, hey, I'm going to put a little sticker back there because I use the magnetic, you know, connector in my car. Right. I got one of those magnetic connectors that goes into the, yeah, uh, I do too. the vents. And he's like, yeah, but you're not going to be able to use the charging pad. <laughs> Well, glad I didn't wait, you know, uh, uh, for it. Although there's, are there non-Apple versions for charging? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's standard Qi charging. So, yep. I actually, I, I've never used it either. I've not, no. I kind of like the cable. And I also do, even though I have the standard leather iPhone case, I have behind it yeah. is the, uh, the plate. Yep. So. The plate, stick it on the, uh, the magnet in your car. Works great. I plug it in to charge it. It's fine. Charge it in the room. Charge it there. I really don't need to charge it in my car. Battery, I I get all day, and I Same could here. go. I could go all night, and probably still have thirty or forty percent left. And I'm a year into the phone or so. Wow. So yeah. you know, you kind of go, oh, okay. Well, what do I really need? Well, a couple of reminders. If you're just joining us tonight, Jim Kennedy, good to have you out here hanging out with us. I see Cyber Skulls out there. He's joined us. Uh, last week as well, coming over from the Burst group. Well, you guys stay around for a little bit if you want to. Mike and I are going to talk a little bit about Burst in our crypto update that we do in the post show. And we put those out via Patreon. If you're a Patreon subscriber, even if you're not, you can get the post show. Both audio and video is available for you uh, out there. Each week, I usually drop those down on Friday night or Saturday sometime. If you want to get the post show, we always talk crypto in the post. It's a little crazy, wild and crazy. And uh, if you want to get that, just head out to theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon or theaverageguy.tv slash support gets you there as well. Don't forget, I mentioned the email address a couple times. If you want to send me a note, Jim at theaverageguy.tv. You can find me on Twitter at Jay Collison. Mike is at Uyghur Tech. if you want to find him there. And our Facebook group that we mentioned about 8,000 times. Good thing we didn't have a drinking game for the Facebook group tonight. <laughs> but theaverageguy.tv slash Facebook gets you there and uh, you can just ask for permission to be in. It's actually a really well managed group, not because of me, but we've got some really good talent that just hangs out around the Facebook group. So if you only do Facebook for one thing, do it for our group. But I mentioned this in the beginning of the show, sign up for the newsletter, go to the average guy.tv slash newsletter, get signed up for that. I'll be double posting those deals and some interesting things that we get out of the Facebook over to the, over to the, Average guy TV. So if you don't want to do Facebook, uh, it'll be behind by a day or two, but we'll post those same deals out for you on the average guy TV. So you can 
get them there as well. Don't forget the AverageGuy.tv platform, both web and media hosting, all powered by Maple Grove Partners. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. Plan start basic sites for even for podcasting, 10 bucks a month. You can't beat it. It's Christian does a great job. Uh, he'll get you up and running super fast. Some of the best private service I've ever seen. And he's a great guy. Maple Grove Partners, all one word, maplegrovepartners.com. That link will be in the show notes as well. Don't forget, you can also get Home Gadget Geeks on the app, on our mobile app, both Android and iPhone available for you. Best way to listen live and on the road. Sometimes, Mike, I even listen to the show the next day. I'm like, you know, like I didn't get a sound check from Peter tonight, so I have no idea how Spreaker sounds. <laughs> so I'll go back on a Friday. I'm like, huh, I wonder how we sounded last night. And uh, I go to the Spreaker app to get it done. All that's available for you. It's for free. Great way to do it. Uh, head out to homegadgetgeeks.com and the links to get it are right there. I've been thinking about doing long sleeve t-shirts for the fall. What do you think? Home Gadget oh, Geeks? I'd be down for that. Long sleeve? Yeah, I'll get I need with a new that. shirt. I get with Addy and we'll get those figured out. If you want to pick up the short sleeve shirt, it's available right now. Home Gadget Geeks. No, it's not there. It's at the average guy.tv slash shirts. <laughs> we'll get you there. I've been doing that all day. Uh, my brain is super tired. Um, but uh, the average guy.tv slash shirt will get you there. And then, Mike, I, I can't I just, listen. I, we have been crushing HelloFresh, which we have named HelloFresh, by the way. It's HelloFresh. 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 Hello um, we, we finally, I think we've gone three or four weeks in a row of getting the three meals for four of us. Daughter's going back to college. We don't need that much food. We're going to have to figure some new things out, but I have a boatload of free weeks. So if you just want to try it out again, I, I make very little off this. If you want to try it out, send me an email, Jim at the average guy TV, and I'll send you a free coupon code that gets you basically your first week for free. And, uh, and just give it a try. It has revolutionized, you know, just tonight we had this like Korean rice bowl, chicken and rice with cashews and like, like um, carrots. And it takes a little preparation, but my daughter has done all the preparation over the yeah, last What are you going to do when she goes back to school? Dude, I'm, I'm screwed. You are, I am you're gonna screwed. Learn to <laughs> uh, we're going to have to, well, we started it before, you know, we started doing uh, HelloFresh before um, she got here and then she got here and she started getting into it. And then, the last couple nights I've gone up there and said, Hey, can, can I help you? And she's like, no, <laughs> I don't want, it's, I don't want thing, people. Huh? I know I do not want people in my All kitchen. Right. And I'm like, what are you Gordon Ramsay? Jeez. So, um, you know, yeah. yes, exactly. Get out of my, your, mm -hmm. you know, get out of my kitchen. So, um, yeah, when she goes back to school, we're going to have to figure it out. It was kind of super cute tonight. She's like, um, hey, I found out the dining hall is not going to be open for the first two days that I'm there. So I'm going to need to go to Walmart and pick up some produce. And I'm like, well, you know what you're going to cook, right? And she's like, totally. Now, a year ago, that would have been a big, daunting mac and cheese. That's that's what she would have. We would have gotten her ramen and mac and cheese. And she would have lived on that for two days. You know? Right. And I think she's going to cook some gourmet stuff. Like she's gonna have all everyone wanting to come over. She's be cooking up nice They have meals. a full kitchen down in the where she goes to school at Northwest. They have a full kitchen down in the basement or in the uh, the the living level. Nobody uses it. I have a feeling she's gonna uh, she's gonna do some. Yeah, the students will be like, "What? Yeah. What's that? What, what is that smell? It's I gotta, get, I, gotta, I gotta get to know that person." So if you're uh, if you're interested in jumping on, giving it a try, let me know. I've got a I've got, like they give me a boatload of free things to send you guys. So. Love to have you do it. It's just kind of changed. It's crazy. It's changed, Mike. Like, it's changed the way I eat food. Like, I don't, I used to just chow at dinner. Like, I'd get home and it was just utility, you know? And now I'm like, wow, taste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my time with this because it's actually tasty. I know. Good. You eat less. Listen, yeah. I think when the food's better, you eat less, you enjoy it more. And I think it makes better conversation. And just, you know, I don't know. I'd agree. One of those things. That's why we're into grilling so much. I did, uh, before we go, I did burn out two tanks completely by leaving them on two nights in a row. So I did a grill. You and told me about this. <laughs> I, think, I, I couldn't believe you did it twice in a, in a row. Two in a row. Yeah, two nights in two a row. tanks burnt right through. I almost ruined my cast iron on the grill by really? leaving, yeah, leaving the heat on that long. I had to go back and recondition them and stuff. But Oh, it was lit? It was lit, <laughs> yeah. 
I thought you would just let the gas open nope. and like leak out. Nope. Oh, Burning medium heat. One of them was brand new. I wonder, like that thing <laughs> must have burnt for two days. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, it was so stupid. I get out there and I look at the grill, and it's it's in the on position, you know. And I'm like, oh, and it had been a week or two since I'd been out there, and you know, it's you know that the tank is empty. Right. I didn't even want to look at the grill. I was like, oh my god. What have I done? So I, it was, I don't know what I was thinking. I just forgot to turn it off both times. And uh, so the food was good. It was just a little expensive um, at that point. We did uh, the other night, Sarah was out. We did, we went down to Fairway and picked up some sirloin wraps, eight ounce sirloin wraps, four bucks each, which is great for an eight ounce. Yeah. And and then I don't know about you. I did, um, we did wrapped bacon wrapped asparagus have you have you Ooh, done no, we're huge asparagus fans dude, but i've never done bacon wrapped dude swing by fairway they have it all ready for you some of their and it's really good bacon 3.99 a pound super good price bacon right and the, the bacon keeps the asparagus kind of um moist because okay. it's bacon grease <laughs> right? right it's and it's just super good and so um bacon wrapped asparagus delightful and then you just cut that open and i just eat them like candy they were so, so good. yeah oh, i'm a, we're huge asparagus fans yeah. i never thought about wrapping it in bacon yeah, no just idea. get it you can either do it yourself or right. in, in, yeah. it's the smaller asparagus that works out really well okay not thinner stuff not the thick stocks yeah the big the the smaller ones that work right. really well and then i did my uh i did my grilled corn which works out really well put that thing you know by the, right now corn is like free basically here in nebraska like you go to walmart it's 25 cents an ear really fresh although it probably comes from texas that's the funny <laughs> thing right yeah it's right here <laughs> but uh, we're gonna ship this in we've got plenty of corn for the country but we're gonna ship this in from texas um and just throw that on there with the uh with the husks on it and just roll it over for about 10 or 15 minutes it'll burn the husks off when the husks are gone, it'll caramelize the, it'll have cooked and caramelize the corn. Pull that corn in, let it cool, cool for a few minutes, take a knife, slice that corn right off the cob, throw it into a cast iron skillet with a little bit of bacon and some butter, and you'll get roast, you get like a roasted corn, almost salsa oh, wow. base. Like you could throw it in a salsa or you could just do it fresh. Sounds you could really put, good. Put it on anything, put it in a burrito. It's smoky and flavorful and bacon. Yes, you want to you want to do that. It's bacon. We we made this meal, and three of the four items had bacon <laughs> in it. It was pretty cool. It seems so, to be a common ingredient. It makes everything better. I'm like, why not? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some great stuff. Uh, it doesn't sound like. I guess we don't have Mark tonight. He must be out. Maybe he's out grilling. He would have had a lot of things to throw in as well. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at the Arts Guy TV Live. Mike and I. Will switch gears and go into a little bit of crypto you only get the crypto if you come out for the post show that's not really true you can go to patreon and get it but uh we thank you for coming out tonight with that we'll say goodbye everybody